Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. AMD's newest generation of Ryzen 7000 CPUs are finally here, and with it comes a slew of big changes. I'm talking support for the new memory standard DDR5, PCI Express 5.0, a brand new socket and platform since first in Ryzen, and an integrated GPU. Not to mention their Expo memory profiles. So whether you're new to Ryzen or you've owned every series so far, there's a lot of new stuff. Luckily, AMD sent over a couple of their newest CPUs, so a thanks to them, and because of that, I'm going to go over the first five things to do with your new Ryzen 7000 CPU. Oh, and if you haven't picked up Ryzen 7000, I'll have affiliate links in the description below. They don't cost you anything more and it helps the channel out. Either way, let's get right to the list. Starting things off, Ryzen 7000 is the first series of CPUs to come with an integrated GPU. Up until now, only their APUs and mobile parts had one, and that was done so you can test your parts without a discrete card. Or for users who don't game or do applications that need a powerful GPU. AMD may later release parts without an iGPU, but for now, they all have it. And while they only come with two CUs, they're really not bad. So after you've installed Windows and gotten everything up and running, if you plan to use your integrated GPU, you'll want to head over to AMD.com, click on Drivers and Support, then either install their auto-detect Radeon software or find your CPU and install the most recent Adrenaline driver, or whatever they end up calling it if they change the name. You'll likely notice that your resolution isn't a potato after the install, and that's because you now have drivers over the generic junk Windows installs. After you get your graphics drivers in order, let's talk about your BIOS, or technically UEFI, but most people still call it a BIOS. Either way, it's basically the interface between your firmware and operating system, and it's definitely important. Now, don't usually I don't recommend don't touching your BIOS, but given how new Ryzen 7000 is, it can be a good idea to update it. Of course, if you're watching this long after the release and everything is working so far, I suggest waiting to see if you have problems later on. Otherwise, to get to the correct BIOS, BIOS, head to your motherboard manufacturer's website, find your exact model motherboard, and install the newest BIOS update. Most motherboard vendors have an installer tool in the BIOS, so try to use that. Otherwise, you can follow your motherboard vendor's steps to install it via BIOS flashback. Now, before I get to number three, if you like to follow the PC hardware industry, you know how hard it can be to keep up with all the releases. There's always something right around the corner to where even the big releases can get confusing. And that's why I started Meld Alerts. All you have to do is sign up at meldalerts.com for free. And when major PC hardware is released, I'll send you an alert. Plus, I'll let you know where you can get great deals so you can actually get the parts at a great price. And don't worry, I'm not going to flood your inbox. Some weeks you won't get anything, and others you might get a few. To sign up, just visit meldalerts.com and fill out the form. It's just your email. The third thing to do is to install your chipset driver. This can get confusing because your motherboard manufacturer will typically have a chipset driver on their site, but I don't recommend using that. Simply put, it could be an older driver, while AMD will always have the most up-to-date chipset drivers. So like before, head to AMD.com and click on Drivers and Support. But this time, find your chipset under the drop-down and install the chipset driver. After that's done, go back to the site, find your CPU, and install a version of something called Ryzen Master. This is a really great tool that helps you keep up with temps, overclock the CPU, etc. And yes, you get a more permanent overclock with a BIOS overclock, but Ryzen Master is great for testing what works and really just playing around with it. The next thing to do is to adjust your memory. Just like previous generations, Ryzen is based on a chiplet design, meaning each CPU is made up of smaller modules called chiplets, and the interconnect that combines them, called the Infinity Fabric, is tied to your memory speed. So the faster the memory clock, the faster the interconnect, and the lower latency you have in cross-communication, at least up to a point, as things are a bit different this time around. Currently, Ryzen 7000 is rated for DDR5 up to 5200. Anything over that is considered considered an overclock. Of course, DDR5 can go quite a bit higher than that, and that's where memory overclocking comes in. It's also why the Infinity Fabric is set up a bit differently this time around. For starters, if you have Expo memory, which is AMD's new overclocking profiles similar to Intel's XMP, I'd suggest just picking the best profile up to DDR5 6000. If not, you want to head to your BIOS and find Infinity Fabric frequency, then set it to auto with memory speed and your memory controller on a 1 to 1 ratio. 
ratio. This sets the Infinity Fabric to 2000 MHz starting at 2400 MHz memory speed, with 2000 MHz being the higher end of what you can expect to get out of the Infinity Fabric, and AMD claims that's your best bet in most cases. From here, you can overclock your memory, but don't go past 6000 or 3000 MHz. The reason is because anything past 3000 MHz and the memory controller will go to a 1 to 2 ratio with your RAM, causing performance issues, so 6000 is your best bet. Finally, try out overclocking and eco mode. Ryzen 7000 already gets some insane clocks out of the box, but it's always fun to see just how far you can push it. With that said, I take zero responsibility if something goes wrong, so only try this if you know what you're doing. Otherwise, you can simply turn on Precision Boost Overdrive, which should give you a bit of extra performance depending on your thermal headroom. In contrast, if you're looking to save on power while still getting some impressive performance, AMD has Eco Mode, which basically lets you lower your TDP. As an example, according to AMD, the 7950X operating at 65 watts can get more performance than the 5950X uncapped. Currently, they plan to add it to Ryzen Master and make it a standard AM5 feature, but as of the writing of this, it isn't. Instead, you have to head to your BIOS, go to AMD Overclocking, PVO Advanced, Manual, and enter these settings to adjust it. Either way, it's an exciting feature to try out. So while that does it for today, let me know one of the first things you did with your Ryzen 7000 build down in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please subscribe. And as always, have a great day!